this episode of Tucker Got Makes a Unboxing First Impressions Wing Review, we're gonna take a look at the Cougar 3 16 meter from Niviek. All right, so in all seriousness, why am I interested in this wing? Well, I've explained in the past, I love my ozone free ride, but it's starting to get a little ragged out. It's old, it's towards the end of its life. Still flies great, the performance isn't affected, but I can tell it's kind of getting a little older. So I'm in the market for a new wing, and instead of just buying another 16 meter ozone free ride, I wanna go out and search a little bit and see if there's anything better. I'm not brand loyal in any way, so if there's something better than the free ride, I'd like to fly it and own it. Enter the Niviak Cougar 3. If you guys were tuned into our van life adventure out in Salton Sea, I had the opportunity to fly a 23 meter of one of these guys. That was way too big for me, but I was impressed enough with it at that huge size that I really wanted to get my hands on a 16 meter. My man Canyon over at Team Fly Halo heard my report back to him and he went ahead and ordered this 16, shipped it right to the house so I could get it as soon as we got home. And here we are. So the Cougar 3, what kind of wing is it? Now, reading right off Niviak's website, the Cougar 3 arrives ready to revolutionize the world of paramotoring. That is a bold claim, but I like it. Its fast but maneuverable character makes it the ideal glider for your navigation and cross-country flights. The Cougar 3 is agile, extremely stable, with excellent performance. So the Cougar 3, I don't think, is a very slalom-driven glider, and that's the kind of class of wing I've been flying. I would say that the Cougar 3 kind of tries to strike a step below that, more of an all-around wing that is good for cross-country, still can be thrown around, but not really on the edge of, this is performance-driven just to win slalom competitions. Sour Patches? A baby dill pickle? Mike and Ike's? Is this a wing or a Halloween basket? A Niviak beanie? Two Niviak beanies? Cat toys? Damn, it's freaking Christmas up in here. Niviak jersey? Two Niviak jerseys? More cat toys? A ring pop? Two ring pops? More cat toys? Fresh from the factory, she's got that new wing smell. What I wanna do is anytime I do a first impressions wing review in the future and uh, in the past, I like to have kind of a level baseline. I don't wanna go out and kite these wings and get a feel for them before I launch them. I kinda like to see if I just lay the wing out, clip in and go take off, how I will do. If I can pick up a wing and just go launch it and have no issues, then I would say it's a good launching wing. If I struggle to get it off the ground and it needs some weird voodoo technique to get it off the ground, then I would say it falls in a category of there's something a little weird about this wing. Some might say difficult to launch, but that's for you to decide. These risers are so nice, so lightweight, and the lines on the 16 unsheathed, they're like so nice. Toggle design, if you remember from the, uh, the 23, these are the toggles that you stick on and they come on, but then you can't take them off unless you pull down. And this one, remember one gripe I had was it was tied backwards? Not really a gripe because, I mean, it's a simple change, but this is tied the proper way uh, from the factory. They did it right. Trim tabs, super nice. They're short little guys, kind of like the free ride. All the way in is your neutral spot. Nice and simple. Alrighty, wing is laid out. I didn't even kite it up. I just stretched it out, checked my lines, and I love those risers. That is a good riser. No crazy buckles, no tip steering handles no unnecessary bits. Um, they're just perfect in my opinion. I would say it's a setup where one third of the speed is in the trims and the next two thirds is in the speed bar, which is how the free ride is, I'm a fan of. The toggles are tied correctly as they should be from the factory and she's ready to go. Now the winds right now, they're dying down, but there's just a little bit, maybe up to three miles per hour. So that's the situation, not a zero win launch, but this is gonna be my first attempt at a launch. 
on the 16 size of this wing. So let's get geared up. Let's get the helmet on, the jacket on, and we'll see how she flies. I'm stoked. This is, this wing has a lot of promise to me. So I hope it's as good as I'm hoping. All right, here we go. Niviyuk, 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 Niviyak. Cougar 316, take one. So the launch was nice and easy. Launch number one, I didn't really hit it very hard. I just kind of ran forward, it came right up and waited for me and then I took right off. Nice and easy, good efficiency. When I got in that brake pressure, it lifted me right off the ground without much effort at all. So the first thing I noticed right off the bat was the efficiency. This glider feels pretty fast, even trimmed all the way in, and it requires a little bit less RPM than my free ride does at a similar trim setting. When I came off of the power, I could feel that it had a better glide rate. It just wanted to hang up there. Now the 2D toggle system with the tip tied on the right side that I would prefer just from the factory as it should be, felt really nice. You get some good definition. It definitely feels unique and different. And I like the idea of the split 2D steering design on that toggle. So as I started to do some low slalom type turns, I started to get a feel for the handling of the glider. And what I noticed right off the bat was it didn't feel like a slalom glider. It felt more like a cross country oriented glider. That's exactly how Nivea pitches it. They say it is a cross country wing. So what I mean by this is the roll axis. A slalom wing will bank into a turn really fast and it'll kind of want to stay there. The Cougar 3 doesn't bank into turns very quickly or with light pressure like a slalom glider. And when you release the pressure, it wants to come back to neutral. The cool thing about that is that means when you're on a cross country flight and you're getting bumped around, it does not want to oscillate. It wants to track a straight line and that's super, super good for cross countries. Now, all that being said, it's still a 16 meter glider and you can throw it around like anything else. Down low slalom turns, up high wing overs, it performed very nice, it tracked like it was on rails, and you can throw it through some pretty massive wing overs without any real effort. While I was up high, I tried some deep brakes and it felt very predictable. You can get really nice pressure and unlike the Carve, it didn't have that characteristic where you feel the reflex profile. The Cougar 3 felt very linear and very natural, like I would expect it to be. Now, like I mentioned, I won't be trying the speed bar until the next flight in the next video, but I did try the trims. And what I noticed was when I let the trims out, I felt like I gained a significant amount of speed, but I didn't increase my RPM significantly. Now that goes to show that it is a really good cross country wing. It has a decent amount of speed in the trimmers and it does it efficiently. It doesn't require you to be at full power just on trims. I'm really looking forward to seeing how the speed bar tests go and see what that top speed is. And I'm sure it's gonna be fast. Now, as I came in for a landing on the very first landing, I purposefully wanted to flare high to see where that stall point break is. What I found was the stall point was very, very deep. I got a really good pressurized positive flare, held it all the way down and I was still about a foot off the ground. And then I found that stall point and the wing buckled and fell back. Um, on my second attempt, I hit it a lot harder and it popped right up really fast. And I actually jabbed the brakes momentarily to stop it. It didn't wanna fall down or do anything crazy and just let me take off on my merry way. On my second landing, I didn't purposefully flare high. I just flared as I normally would. I didn't hit that stall point. I got down to a nice slow speed with really positive, good brake pressure. All right, initial, initial first impressions. I've got one, two flights, about 30 minutes of flight time on the wing so far, and there's not really anything I can say bad about it. I feel like this wing kind of it fits in a very small category or kind of creates its own category. This fits in a category where it's closer to the slalom efficiency that you get on a very advanced wing. Not the slalom responsiveness, but all the good cross country features. Comfortable in turbulence, very locked in, doesn't want to oscillate. I feel like this would be an ideal Icarus wing or an ideal Iceland cross country deep exploration wing. What I'm really excited to find out is when I hook up the speed bar, speed bar, go trims out and bar and see how fast it goes. Cause I think it's gonna be really fast. The Judson Mobile is just landing on his new Scout, AKA Woody's old Scout. And 
I'll see if he wants to take her up for a rip and see what his impressions are. All right, we only have 8% on this battery, so hopefully it lasts. I'm gonna talk fast. Judson's gonna go flyer. We'll see how he does. Look at that recovery. What a guy. What a wing. I think Judson likes it. That was a fast one. Oh. Oh. It's everything I want the Doberman to be. Really? Yeah. Um, did you trim it out? Yeah. It feels I like, like it goes. It feels like it's really fast. That yeah. was like, I didn't trim it out past this. Mm -hmm. I felt like when I trimmed out, it gained a lot of speed, but my RPM wasn't much higher. Not like yeah. the free ride, I felt like has a little more. RPM to it, trimmed yeah, out. Yeah, it makes you work for things a little bit still. Mm -hmm. What do you think is more responsive, your 18 Doberman or this? Oh, this is way, way more responsive. Interesting. I don't know. Like, the Doberman feels laggy and slow, and I think it's just because it's big. Right. Like, when I came by you and foot drug and then hung that massive turn over you, yeah. like, I can't do that on that. Huh. Like, it doesn't... It doesn't respond fast enough to flick it over. Yeah. Like the biggest thing I took away from this is like the tip steer is way more responsive than that. Interesting. So before we end the video, I wanna give a huge thank you to my friends over at Team Fly Halo for ordering this wing for the demo and shipping it out and allowing me to fly it. I think this wing fits in a category where it would be really, really good for an advanced pilot that doesn't wanna to go to the extreme expert level slalom glider that accepts a bit more risk. If they don't need something like that, I think this would be a great wing for them. Wings like the Freeride are made to be unstable so that you get that crazy roll rate performance. What you sacrifice is the stability. When you get external forces hitting you, you're gonna react to it and it's gonna wanna roll. This wing takes kind of the best of those two worlds. You get the efficiency and the speed of a slalom glider, but the stability of a cross country wing. So I hope you enjoyed the initial first impressions and unboxing. As I said, I'm gonna be doing more with this wing in the future, so stay tuned for more comprehensive reviews on it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Till the next one, peace.